to welcome you to the September Community Support Group meeting with our featured speaker, Michelle Joy Kramer, as she presents My Journey to Health and Beyond. Um, Michelle will offer tips and tools to help empower others on their personal health journey. And um, if you're wondering who is this person talking right now, <laughs> my name is Stephanie Spencer. Um, I'm a cardiac nurse. I live outside of Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, and I've been kind of peripherally affiliated with PBNSG as a contributor on PBNSG University. Um, I'm kind of new to the plant-based movement. We uh, discovered it two years ago when my husband got diagnosed with diabetes, reversed it in a few months. And um, so I was just hooked and I went on and got a certification in plant-based nutrition. And um, then I started creating a course. I, I used to run a heart failure clinic for 20 years. Created and a course for chronic course, disease, I, disease I, I reversal, and um, I'm getting ready to launch a live course on September 28th, which uh, also is live streamed. So if y'all have, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir, but if y'all have anyone that uh, wants we have to a terrible uh, echo. diabetes we have a, and stuff, and there's nothing about plant uh, we, we have a terrible echo. echo. Oh, I'm sorry about that. If y'all could mute yourselves when you come in. You can mute, are you able to mute them? Everyone is muted that I can see, um, except for Robert Zucker. Let me, I'm gonna hit a mute there, okay. I think we're all muted otherwise. Okay, anyway, is that better? Yes. Okay, doke. All right, well anyway, let me just tell you, I'll wrap this up real quick. But anyway, I'm launching a live class starting September 28th. It's also live streamed. If you know anyone that's struggling with diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, and would like to get an easy peasy regular path forward for just regular people that are eating sausage biscuits, <laughs> uh, my website's naturalstateplantbase.com and I'll put that in the chat. Um, the recording of this presentation will also be available for PBNSG members on the membership platform in 24 to 48 hours, and it should be available on the PBNSG YouTube channel soon. Um, those who would like to become a member can join at membership.pbnsg.org. Uh, please know that the monthly community support group meetings are always free without joining the membership. Uh, for those who are new to our events, PBNSG stands for Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group. We are a global virtual organization and offer online lectures, classes, resources, and culinary events, all focused on a whole food plant-based lifestyle for anyone in any location. Uh, PBNSG was founded by Paul Chatlin in 2014 after he learned how to reverse his heart disease by changing to a whole food plant-based lifestyle and wanted to help others also improve their health. Uh, you can read more about this on our website at pbnsg.org. Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group is a nonprofit organization dedicated to evidence-based education and advocacy of plant-based whole food nutrition and an active lifestyle to help individuals prevent or reverse chronic disease and achieve optimal health. Uh, PBNSG upcoming events are September 14th, we'll host the Sherzai family, September 21st, Chef Katie May, and then September 29th, uh, Sarah's, uh, Dr. Sari Stancic, and I'll be guest hosting that one as well. Um, October 7th will be Brenda Davis and Reshma Shah, MD. Um, okay, and so now let me tell you a little bit about our presenter tonight, uh, Michelle Joy Kramer. Uh, CHHC AADP is a board certified holistic health practitioner an integrative nutrition health coach who helps individuals and corporate teams achieve their optimal health through healthy lifestyle changes. Michelle is a graduate of the Institute for Integrative Nutrition in New York City. She is accredited by the American Associate Association of Drugless Practitioners and has completed CEU and certification programs for health counseling through Purchase College, State University of New York. Michelle is a member of American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Michelle has a global private concierge health coaching practice and is the organizer of a whole food plant-based community group in Naples, Florida, consisting of over a thousand members called the Naples Green Scene. She's also an accomplished top competing triathlete whose greatest achievement was qualifying for and completing the Ironman World Championship Triathlon in Hawaii. 
So without further ado, I present to you, Michelle Joy Kramer. Yay. Thank you, Stephanie. I was thinking as I was listening to you, when do I sleep? <laughs> After all of that. Um, thank you so much. And I'm gonna share my screen with everybody. Okay, can you see everything? Oops. Stephanie, all good? Okay. So thank you, Stephanie, and uh, thank you, PBNSG, the whole team at PBNSG, and of course, my team, thank you. Uh, tonight could not have happened without everybody as a team. And I'm so happy to be here with all of you. And my mother's waving. <laughs> it's always fun when you have mom in the crowd. And uh, so I also want to thank Paul Chatlin, who's the founder of PBNSG. So I was... Uh, the odd person here in Naples, Florida, until I joined the Naples Green Scene. And the Naples Green Scene is a meetup group, as Stephanie mentioned, in, Nap in Naples, Florida. And uh, we have a thousand of us now. And it's been a great support group for educating, learning about whole food plant-based nutrition and meeting others who are like-minded. And I'll tell you more about that later. going to move this up a little. It's always fun with technology. So this is me and uh, I'm going to start back on my health journey. This was my first Ironman in Florida. That's my mother on the right and one of my sisters on the left. And uh, I had always struggled with health issues most of my life. I always looked good and healthy on the outside, but inside it was a whole different story. Um, I had IBS, uh, I was diagnosed with IBS. I had adrenal fatigue. I would work out twice a day and then go home and eat sugar, refined sugars, processed foods. And nobody really knew that I wasn't feeling well inside except myself. It wasn't something that I really shared with people. Um, and again, I look good on the outside. I was winning races. Uh, it's just something I didn't talk about. I just sucked it up and that's what you did as an athlete. So uh, I started to go to different doctors to figure out, you know, is this normal? I would hear people that I exercised with that it was normal just to have stomach problems and eat sugar and reward yourself. So I, I went to a few doctors and never really got answers. Uh, they never mentioned anything about diet or lifestyle. Uh, you know, I was an Ironman and you just, that's what you do. You exercise like crazy. Bear with me. <laughs> okay. So this was my diet back then. This was in 2005 and this is what I ate. And uh, as you can see on the right-hand side, I also was a closet smoker. No one knew about that either. Mom, did you know about that? Um, so, you know, I just loved my haagen at night. Um, I would do Imodium every single day, Advil. Uh, it was just a norm for me. And, uh, you know, my body hurt every day, but I would just get up, exercise, uh, eat the foods I was eating. I thought, natural peanut butter was healthy, skin milk. You know, I didn't know any better. And uh, this was my diet back in the day. So I'm just gonna pause for a moment and have everyone just take a look at this. And if you could put in the chat, if there's, you know, one or two things that, you know, I know we have a range of different people here on a whole food plant-based, you know, some are beginners on a whole food plant-based diet, some are here just, to hear about my health journey and they're, you're curious about, you know, making some changes, small changes in your life. Is there anything that you, I like, I used to call it closet eat because I used to closet eat Dairy Queen and all this kind of stuff. So 
is there anything that you eat that you feel guilty about or you know you don't feel good but you keep eating it i'd love to hear from one or two of you maybe one or two things if you could put that in the chat this is a vulnerable time to share Thin mints. Any brownies out there or Girl Scouts? I was a Girl Scout and brownie. Amy's dairy free, gluten free bean burritos. Okay. Salmon, chips. Edna, potato chips. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing that. So, most of us all have something that we eat that we may not feel our best, but we just continue to eat it. And that was what I did. Um, oh, my slide, there we go. Okay, so fast forward 10 years in 2015, I, finally changed my diet. I uh, went to a chiropractor and she said to me, you have adrenal fatigue. You need to start paying attention to your lifestyle. And I didn't like her very much at the time. She had me get off wheat, dairy and sugar. And that was a huge change for me and a very uncomfortable change for me because I'm a type A and I went full out and just gave up wheat, dairy and sugar right away. Uh, I became vegetarian and uh, ended up, I stopped doing Ironmans and went back to school, got my health coaching certification. And uh, this was one of my many clients at the time. I was health coaching WLRN and this was a television station in Miami, Florida. And, you know, I felt great actually. Uh, I was working with this team for a year uh, we all trained to do the Mercedes-Benz corporate run. I was eating things like sustainable fish, organic eggs, uh, raw goat cheese. And I was happy with my weight. Um, and I was proud of the changes I made and I, I felt good. So I thought I had arrived, you know, that was it. And, um, you know, I never really thought at that time, somebody had mentioned something about cholesterol. Uh, I knew my mother had high cholesterol, but I never really thought it was an issue because I, you know, worked out, uh, cleaned up my diet and was feeling good and great. So it just was always kind of in the back of my mind that maybe one day when I, you know, hit my forties or fifties that could I have high cholesterol? I don't know, but it was something I had thought about in the background. So... In 2017, uh, my girlfriend at the time, we were following my healthy diet with the sustainable fish. And I think I was even eating chicken then and uh, raw goat cheese, um, which was my favorite. And um, one evening we were going out to uh, this event and her blood pressure skyrocketed out of nowhere. A very scary moment for both of us. Uh, in her late forties. And within 24 hours, she had a stent put in her heart. We were both in shock and I felt helpless uh, as a health coach, uh, being in the hospital with her and having to do this surgery so quickly. She was told it was genetic and that changing her diet wouldn't make, it, make a difference. Cause right away I said, can we go home and she'll change her diet and, um, I had heard about being vegan, but I really didn't understand the whole concept of whole food plant-based. I just thought you stop eating meat. And uh, again, we weren't doing much dairy at the time, but uh, they, the doctor said, cardiologist said, absolutely not. Uh, again, it's genetic and changing your diet won't make a difference. So she had surgery and I was amazed and I'll never forget this moment that uh, after her surgery, they brought her a high sodium beef broth soup. That was her recovery meal. I almost had a heart attack. Um, I had to keep my mouth shut, which was very hard for me, especially when you love somebody and you see them going through this. 
And I knew inside that food was medicine. I knew there was uh, something that we could do, but this was at the time, the choice that she made. And again, we, there was no one on, on our, on my side, I, I should say. So uh, a couple months later, uh, we were looking to move and we, we, uh, we went into this condo in Naples and there was a woman that the owner of the condo and she had all these health materials. And the minute I walk in someone's house, I start looking at, I can't help it. I mean, I've been a health coach for, you know, 12 years now. And I just start looking at what books do they have and what food are they eating? And it's not a judgment thing. It's just my passion. And I just start looking. So I saw all these healthy uh, food books and I saw this book on the shelf called The Green Scene Diet with this beautiful woman on the back. And it was all about food and these really crazy, uh, sexy creatures that she created, Linda, who's on the call as well. And I just was drawn to this book. So my, the lady, uh, Connie, she said, you need to meet my friend. I, I mentioned the book and uh, I said I was a health coach and my partner had just had health, uh, heart surgery. She said, you need to meet my friend, Linda Burson. So immediately I called Linda. I said, I need to come meet you. She thought I was crazy. We still were very, very close friends. And uh, I said, I need to come to your house and talk to you because my girlfriend's still having complications now after the surgery um, with her blood pressure and all these different medications. And it was just this, you know, it wasn't the solution. And I'm a very spiritual person. And I knew that the minute Linda opened her front door, that there was a connection we had. And, uh, you know, everything started to line up. So Linda said, my husband, Buzz, had a triple bypass at 61. He's been on Dr. Esselstyn's diet, who's on the left-hand side here, the slideshow. And she said, you need to call Dr. Esselstyn. And I said, I had heard about Dr. Esselstyn because I learned about him in school. And I knew he wrote the book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, but that's all I really knew. So we got connected with Dr. Esselstyn and uh, within one week we're, we were on a flight and we uh, were able to actually be with him at his home, which was really exciting. So I felt like I was meeting the president of the United States because I was so happy to meet him and connect with someone that um, gave us hope. That's really what it was. And um, for those of you that know Dr. Esselstyn, his famous words are, no oil. He always says that in his talks. Never really understood what that mean, meant either at the time. So Dr. Esselstyn um, educated us about a whole food plant-based diet. He said, do you wanna get healthier? Do you wanna reverse this? Um, because she still had some, my girlfriend still had some blockage. And he said, you have to go on a whole food plant-based diet no meats, no dairy, no added oil, no refined sugars, and a low sodium diet. So we left his home feeling very annoyed and confused. And we got in the car and we drove to the most famous pizza place and sat down and had pizza. Um, we didn't really listen to one thing he said. <laughs> it was just a very hard thing to hear. Um, we both liked to travel and go to nice restaurants and nice hotels. And we both felt like our life was over. Um, I say we both, cause I was gonna do this with her um, as a team together. And I was interested. I was also interested in experimenting with this diet to understand, I thought how much better could I feel, you know? Um, so, and Linda, uh, going back, Linda had said to me, when's the last time you had your cholesterol check? I said, oh, my cholesterol's fine. And she'll tell you, she annoyed me in the beginning. <laughs> and today she's been the greatest gift in my life. And I had my cholesterol checked and it was, it was, I'm gonna show you my slide, it was up there. So um, after the pizza, we got on a flight and I decided to go home and do more research. I really wanted to understand just beyond what Dr. Esselstyn said, I knew his track record. Um, 
And I just wanted to understand this diet more. So I called Linda when we got back uh, to Naples and, you know, Buzz, her husband is living proof. He was on the diet. He's still on the diet. He was on no medications after a triple bypass. Um, I looked at the science. I mean, I was, I, I was bought into it. The only thing was I hadn't experienced or, you know, experimented yet with the diet to feel it for myself and to see the changes in my blood work. I knew that this was a life or death situation for my partner. And that's how, um, that's what motivated me. So um, I said to her that night, I said, I'm willing to do this with you. Let's give it three months. I found a chef for us. I, you know, Linda helped with all the recipes. I used the Naples Green Scene book or the Green Scene book. Our group is called the Naples Green Scene. And um, I just, it was so difficult in the beginning. Not something I wanna say for people just starting out. It's been seven years for me now. But in the beginning, it was really, really difficult. Um, you know, again, not being able to go to social events and what do I order on the menu besides a baked potato? And, and how do I steam vegetables? And what is an Instapot? I didn't even know what an Instapot was. I didn't know what an air fryer was. I, you know, I missed my chicken. I missed, you know, so all these things were going on. And, you know, it was just a really hard time and it was a very lonely time. And again, I was really grateful for the support I had with Linda and Buzz. So we both decided to go on the diet. And by the way, on the right-hand side, that was our cabinet, our pantry of all of our oils, dairy, salt, high sodium foods. Um, we got rid of all of that. that. That was our pantry. So this is the diet we, we went on. As you can see, a big change compared to the Twizzlers and Thin Mints that I showed you earlier. And it was life-changing. Um, I felt an immediate difference, uh, probably within four weeks, started to feel better. Again, I didn't even know I felt, I felt great. So it was, I felt better than I was feeling. Um, the hardest part, for me was the no added oil. Again, I added oil in everything. I put MCT oil in my coffee. I, I cooked with olive oil. I did ghee. I, I'm very big into Ayurvedic medicine. So I did ghee in my coffee, uh, put butter on everything. I thought the more oil I did, the more weight I would lose. I had this really different concept <laughs> and it really worked. Cause I, again, I was working out a lot. So I just had this scientific way of doing what I was doing that was working. And then this whole new world came in and all these new changes happened. So my cholesterol at the time, I'm not expecting you to read this, but my cholesterol um, at the time was 189, my total cholesterol. And three months later, it went down to 146. And for me, I'm all about science. And that was, I was hooked the minute I saw that. Um, I lost 10 pounds that I didn't even know I had to lose. Um, I felt better, I was sleeping better. My body stopped hurting completely. I couldn't believe it. I had this lower left back pain forever. I always did yoga, I was, you know, swam, I got massages and it never went away. Um, and I just felt happier. I felt less anxious. I just noticed little things. I'm very in tune with my body. And, you know, I was sold. That was it for me. Yeah. Someone isn't muted. Thanks, Stephanie. I'm watching my time. I have to go quick. So this is my mom. My mom's on the call. And a month or two later after doing this diet, my mom saw the results and um, she was very supportive during this whole process. 
And my mom called and said, my doctor wants to put me on a statin and I have a little bit of blockage. And, you know, she was worried. And I said, mom, you're not going on the statin and I'm going to help you. I said, we just did this for three months or whatever it was, two and a half months. Then I told her she knew about my results and she knew about my partner's results. And I said, would you be open to going to this whole food plant-based cardiologist who is also an Ironman, Dr. Delaney? in Florida. And she said, yes. So I brought all those books in the middle. You can see my mother. I brought all those books in the car, highlighted everything that I could find that would be easy for her to read and understand. And I said, you're going to educate yourself. You're going to go home and read. And so that's a picture of her. Uh, She sat in with Dr. Delaney. I sat in with her, the appointment with her, Dr. Delaney mentioned Dr. Esselstyn's diet. So my mom goes, I can't get off of my you know, chicken and she was doing, my mom always ate healthy, but it was always an animal protein and a vegetable. So chicken and string beans, or, you know, we always ate vegetables growing up, but it was always with some type of meat, some type of protein, animal protein. So it was hard for my mom in the beginning and she said she'd be willing to try it. So my mom at the time was 140 pounds. And since then, it's been a little over seven years for my mother, and she's still on the diet. She's lost 18 pounds. She never had to go on a statin. And my mom also has Hashimoto's and Addison's disease. And it's been, it was interesting doing this presentation because it's, this presentation actually, my mom and I really bonded over the last week and a half because I got to really hear her results beyond the statin, beyond the weight that she lost and how much more energy she has. And, um, you know, she was able to uh, lower her thyroid medication. She was on 112 milligrams a day and now she's down to 0.1 milligrams. Crazy. Uh, She also takes hydrocortisone. She's, my mom's given me permission to share all this by the way. She was able to lower that for her Addison's disease that she's had her whole life, her whole life. Um, She was on 20 milligrams, now she's on 15. I mean, that's unheard of. Um, So, and again, in the beginning, it it was wonderful having my mom do this diet with me. It was a way for us to, you know, we didn't really have anybody else because nobody else in my family was doing this diet. So we would go to holidays and we'd have to sneak. I'll never forget this when I ate Mama Says. I was the first uh, company that I found that delivers whole food plant-based food. So no added oil, no salt or low sodium and no refined sugar. And um, I remember my mom calling me going, okay, we're going to meet at the neighbors and you're going to bring the food and you're going to bring this dish and I'll bring that dish and we're going to put it in a, you know, another dish. So grandma doesn't know that we have this special food. So we had to like sneak our food <laughs> at holidays in the beginning, you know, or I had to use the excuse. I was training for a race and I had to keep my body fat low, which I wasn't racing anymore. So it was, you know, it was hard enough to go on the diet and yet we didn't really have the social support around us to applaud us for what we were doing. You know, um, my family heard that my mom, you know, lost the weight and she didn't have to go on a statin. And it was like, well, when are you getting off this diet? You know, there really wasn't much support. So it's been wonderful for my mom and I to connect and be a great support for each other. And my mom is on the call, which I mentioned. And mom, I just want to say that I'm so proud of you. Um, It's, I'm just proud of everything that you've done. My mom actually, mom, you found a whole food plant-based group in the villages. That's where my mom lives, this wild place uh, that she loves. And uh, my my mom just bought an RV and she's traveling the world. So every day I'm getting a text of, a new vegan restaurant she's trying or a new burger she's had. And, you know, she's, you've made it fun mom and you're helping a lot of people in your life. So it's been great uh, living this diet and lifestyle with you.
So I just want to share a couple things. Um, as Stephanie mentioned, I'm a board certified health coach. I've been doing that for 12 years. And uh, my practice has been online. Uh, pretty much 80% of my practice is online all over the country before COVID. <laughs> um, and, you know, some of the keys to success with my clients, uh, these are some of the main points that I wanted to share with you, is listening. I do a lot of listening in my practice. Educating. Uh, we set short and long-term health goals. I help them find support health teams. So if somebody comes and they have uh, high cholesterol, heart disease, high blood pressure, I'll help them find the best you know, lifestyle medicine doctor that I can find for them in their town. Um, you know, just create a team around them. And if there's any whole food plant-based groups around you know, their area, and I hold them accountable. That's the biggest thing. And I think, um, you know, when you're starting out on a diet like this, that accountability is a big piece. Um, you know, and just having someone to share your, the journey with uh, when someone takes on a diet like this. And I feel those are the keys to helping them reach their goals. And there's many tools that you can use. Um, on a, when you're transitioning to a whole food plant-based diet. This is one of the tools that I use in my practice called the circle of life. I love this little guy. Um, and it's really a guide to measure, you know, where my clients are in their life. You know, not just that it's, the food is a big piece, but also other areas of life because you can eat all the steamed broccoli and nitric oxide vegetables, but if you're not happy in your career or you're not happy with the person you're eating across from the table, you know, that affects everything. So, you know, when you guys look at this, uh, this is another question for you. Is there an area in your life where, you know, pops out for you that you would like to work on when you look at this chart beyond the diet? Does anything pop out? Okay, relationships, that's a big one. Home cooking, yes, home cooking is, is a biggie and help. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Michelle, I got that. That's my friend Michelle from Palm Beach, home cooking. Get in the kitchen, Michelle. Oops. So this is one of my clients, uh, Ben, and Ben lives in Los Angeles. Uh, he has been with me a couple years now, and he gave me permission to share this. And when I, I remember uh, sitting in the, his office with him, and he said, I got to lose weight. And I said, well, you got to go on a whole food plant-based diet. That's the quickest way. And it was... So it, it was such a journey in the beginning, the first year for him, because it really, I like to say that it takes a good, it's different for everybody, um, but a good year, you know, to really go slow and implement, you know, it's different for everybody where they are on their health journey, of course, but for him, uh, it took him a good year to, you know, deal with, you know, you got the kids and you got, you know, there's so many factors um, so he's a husband and a dad and all these things. So he, he went full on, took it on. Uh, he's lost 60 pounds. He's a new man, new father, new husband. Uh, he's a joy to work with. And I'm just super proud of him. I get to see results like this every single day in my job. And it's so much fun, my career. So I wanted to share that with you. You can see a big change, right? We called it, uh, he had twins. That's what he would call it back then. So this is another client of mine who I'm super proud of. And uh, Jan lives in Tennessee. As you can see, she's holding up Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, Dr. Esselstyn. 
And when she hired me a couple of years ago, she, she had to go strictly on the diet right away. And I brought in uh, one of the lifestyle medicine doctors I work with, Dr. Sal, who's in town. And uh, we've done several presentations together and he works with several of my clients and he evaluated her blood work. And as a team, we took her on. And within six months, um, she got off seven medications, which was unbelievable. And went back to her heart doctor and I think he almost fell over. And uh, she just, Full on took on the diet, uh, mother of four kids, little kids in her 60s, um, you know, crazy life going, you know, so it was a lot of moving parts to get her to stick to the diet. And she did it and she's still doing it today and I'm still coaching her and uh, it works. You know, that was another great result that we got to see. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. So I talked about earlier, um, you know, about having a community, which all of you have at PBNSG and uh, our plant-based community here is called the Naples Green Scene, which Linda Burson started. And then I came in, uh, I think it was four years ago and uh, told her we're gonna kick it up several notches and we started, uh, Linda's great because she would go to restaurants and educate chefs about how to cook whole food plant-based. And then we ended up bringing in doctors. We had Dr. Michael Greger. We had, um, you can see Garth, Dr. Garth Davis on the right-hand side who wrote Proteinaholic. He came to Naples and we would have three, 400 people that would come. And then COVID hit and now we're in conversation now with PBNSG and we're looking to um, start offering our members now in Naples access to the platform that PBNSG has. And so we're in the works of that right now, putting that on our website so we can connect with all of you and grow this bigger. Cause again, it's in the numbers and you know, having people that we can relate to that are doing this and the, the challenges and the excitement that comes from this diet and lifestyle. So um, yeah, and that's Linda Burson on the left-hand side with her green shoes. And uh, this was a, we did a veggie sushi night at a restaurant. So that was our group, which I used to love sushi, especially spicy tuna. I never thought I would ever give that up, but again, I haven't had it in seven years. Um, So that's my story. And, you know, what I want to leave you with is depending on where you are in your journey, um, even though I went full on uh, due to an emergency with my girlfriend at the time, um, you know, the key is really to go slow, you know, depending on where you are in your health journey, but give yourself space and time to incorporate what you need to, because I, I can tell you over the seven years, I loved and hated this diet. I would go back and forth. It was like a love hate relationship. And it took time for me to implement and where it didn't feel like I was depriving myself. It didn't feel like I was, I had to eat this way or, you know, it just became a lifestyle that I live now. And um, it's wonderful because I get to share it with others and I get to watch people transform, as I mentioned, every single day eating this way. And not all of my clients are whole food plant-based. Um, I'd probably be, probably be out of business. That's kind of one of my jokes. Uh, I still have clients that like to drink wine and I have clients that like to eat chicken and steak. And, you know, and then I have the small percentage that eat whole food plant-based full on and they stick to it and they have great results. And so, you know, I think the key right now, especially in the time we're living in is people are under a lot of stress. I'm sure some of you can relate. Yes. You can just nod, um, you know, and 
you know, I'm a big believer that eating well and getting a good night's sleep and meditating and exercising every day and having love in your life and having a pet to pet and calling your mother and saying, I love you every day. You know, these things beyond just the food are so critical, especially right now in the time we're living in. And the biggest thing is having a support system with you, around you. Um, Because again, it was hard enough going on this diet and not having the support and trying to learn like a new language with this way of eating. So be gentle with yourself. Um, and I have this wonderful recipe book that the chef that works with me, we create it together and it's a whole food plant-based book. One of my favorite recipes is a chocolate ice cream that takes five minutes in the blender. Mackenzie, I think you could make it easily. I'll show you. Um, and it's quick and easy, no dairy. Uh, what else? So you could find this on my website at michellejoykramer.com. And we'll open it up for questions. Well, thanks, Michelle. Um, do you, let's see, why don't we go ahead and do the grid view here? I think we can do that. Uh, do you want to take your, there we go. All right. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, let's see. Ah, you are the best daughter. Thank you. That's from your mom, Michelle. Okay, here's a question from Michelle. What would be the first protein to cut off? And I guess if y'all want to go ahead and type your questions in the chat, and then I'll read them off to Michelle. So Stephanie, can you repeat that again? Yeah, uh, from Michelle here is what would be the first protein to cut off, to cut out? Okay, so protein meaning an animal protein? I think probably. <laughs> let's, let's say it's animal protein, yes. Okay. You know, I'm a big believer as a health coach, and this is why I became a health coach and not a nutritionist or dietitian, was I believe in adding in things, not taking away. So my recommendation, Michelle, is it Michelle? Michelle uh, Severin. Mm -hmm. That's my mentor of 25 years. You know what to do. Um, I would say to add in a protein, a whole food plant-based protein, something like quinoa into your diet so that you're having these complex carbohydrates that will give you some extra fiber, fill you up, give you extra energy. And what will happen is in time, you know, cause to me, there's really no difference between cutting out, you know, yes, you can look at the calories and the fat content and all of that, but I kind of see animal protein as a whole. So to me, if you take out chicken or when some say, well, fish is lean, leaner and better or whatever, I would say add in a whole food plant-based protein like quinoa. That would be my recommendation. All right. Some, okay. Are you ready for the next one? Or we'll try to get them all in here. Why no oil, even olive oil? I thought, I thought olive oil was good for you. I get that all the time. You can imagine. <laughs> no oil, call Dr. Esselstyn. According to Dr. Dr. Esselstyn, um, oil raises blood pressure and it causes uh, vasoconstriction. Uh, it damages the arterial endothelium, endothelium lining. That's my answer. All righty. Um, I find that many plant-based foods have a lot of salt. How much salt intake should one have per serving? Okay, so this is one of my favorite books, okay? The Seven Day Rescue Diet. Again, this is Dr. Esselstyn's son, Rip Esselstyn. 
what I love about this book, and it's, I'm going to lead into the sodium. He's also a triathlete. Uh, this is one of the first challenges I'll, I'll have a client go on, especially my male clients, because he's, he was a firefighter, although the women think he's very cute. Okay. So in his book, he has a wonderful chapter on sodium that I love. And with the sodium, just gonna pull it up real quick. He explains it really well. And again, it's different for everybody because everybody's, everyone's on a different health path, path and people are taking different medications and all of that. So he says, hold on, hold on one second. Um, I just want to double check this. I'll tell you real quick. I'll just be a he filler says, while you're talking there. No, the um, oh. American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology recommendation is uh, the strictest they can conceive of is 1500 milligrams a day. Okay. So what Rip Esselstyn, what he says, and I like the way that he, thank you, Stephanie, for that. I like the way he, how he positions it. He says, you should be getting no more than 500 milligrams of naturally occurring sodium per day from your plant strong food. So whole food plant-based and another 500 to 1000 milligrams from condiments, sauces, and packaged can and canned foods. Because for most people, they don't realize, I've seen with clients that they don't realize how much sodium is in canned foods, how much sodium is in barbecue sauce, you know, little things like that. So I like how he breaks it down, 500 milligrams of naturally occurring sodium per day in your whole foods. You know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people, I do celery juice every day and that has a lot of sodium, natural occurring sodium. Um, and then another 500 to 1000 milligrams for condiments, sauces, packaged and canned foods. And that's from the seven day rescue diet, which I love this, again, this book, I highly recommend it. Excellent. All right, another question here. I started two weeks ago and I get full really fast on greens, et cetera. And I'm thinking I may not be getting enough of everything that is recommended like fruits and grains. Buy this book. Here's the key. You got to educate yourself. So it's every body is different. Every single person, every body, our upbringing is different. Um, you know, our background, everything. So a simple book like the seven day rescue diet is very helpful. And um, hire a health coach. That's my All answer. Right. I think I've got another one I missed here. Hold on. Get my, ah, there it is. How much does a whole food plant-based diet affect vulnerability to COVID? And do you think we need the vaccine? Oh God. <laughs> you know how many times I've gotten that question, the vaccine. So I have had COVID. I had COVID in March. I was very, very sick from it. I had it for four weeks. I eat as clean as you can imagine, which I've shared with you. And I still got really sick and I had to go on modern med medicine. I was on a Z pack. I also did my green smoothies. I also ate my whole food plant-based diet. I slept a lot. I had every symptom. I still don't have my taste or smell. I mean, I had it really bad and I was very scared. But the difference is I knew that I had this, I like to call it health insurance with the diet. I knew that by eating this diet that I was gonna pull out strong and that's just me. So I ate the diet, drank the diet, did it all, everything I could do, and I got COVID. I also recently got whatever this virus is that's out. I got that. And again, 
I ate clean. I did the diet. Um, and no, I have not been vaccinated. Well, to back up what Michelle was saying about feeling good after she got COVID, um, the, there was a recent study that came out that uh, showed they did a uh, surveyed healthcare workers during COVID and just surveyed what they ate. And of all the workers, uh, healthcare workers that contracted COVID, uh, they tracked how many had a severe course of COVID, meaning like COVID matters if you end up in ICU and possibly need to go on a ventilator. Um, they found of those healthcare providers that were plant-based, they had a 73 decreased 73 percent decreased incidence of severe covid and that's what matters these days especially when we have variants that are going everywhere when you're vaccinated you don't have a force field around you you will get covid and then your immune system will kick in and knock it out okay but um people that uh th this was before they had the vaccine and so what matters is if you get gravely ill and end up on a ventilator. And um, so yeah, 73% decreased incidence on a whole food plant-based diet. And if you were keto or paleo, you had a 43% increased incidence of getting gravely ill and ending up on a ventilator. So, yeah. So I just wanna say one thing, you know, with this diet that I have found, so one of my clients was on a ventilator in Los Angeles and uh, I ended up helping him put on 30 pounds. And the way I did it was, I was, I was like a little detective with this diet. I wanted to make sure I had every nitric oxide vegetable, green leafy vegetable in his body. I wanted to make sure that his blood vessels would open up. I wanted to, you know, every little detail to what his wife was cooking for him or smoothies he was drinking or whatever it was that we needed to do together. And he pulled through, he's doing great now. But I knew right away to get the whole food plant-based, you know, menu out. And that's, that's how he, I feel was a huge part of, of him pulling through. Excellent. Got another one. Could you explain how protein levels are still attained, even though we don't eat animal products? Um, when you, can you elaborate a little more about that? I think they probably are referring to complete protein that we get from animals versus the different levels of amino acids that are in plant proteins. And like, how do you get enough of your nine essential amino acids from plants when animal protein delivers all nine essential amino acids right into your mouth? Well, animals are eating plants. That's a good point, yeah. The, um... okay. And so, you know, here's my, here's my, I'm not a nutritionist. So I'm not going to give nutrition advice. Okay. But what I will say is keep it simple. Do your research Buy the book proteinaholic by Dr. Garth Davis. He's unbelievable. Like I said, we brought him to Naples. He's going to break down for you this protein theory that we have going on that we need more protein. What we need is more fiber in our diet. So it goes in and it goes out. Yeah, yeah I learned right. a really good um, explanation from Dr. Joel Furman, like the um, Eat to Live book guy. Sure. But um, yeah, he explained it that the whole problem with complete protein, when it goes into our mouth and enters our stomach in the complete form, it stimulates high level. This is what made me convert to a plant-based diet. Complete animal protein makes our liver produce high levels of insulin-like growth factor one, which I'll call IGF-1. IGF-1 mm -hmm. stimulates the production of blood vessels, which is called angiogenesis, okay? The creation of blood vessels feeds things like cancer. If you get a little mutated cancer cell, if it doesn't have a, a blood source, it won't grow. So complete animal protein will stimulate blood supply to anything in your body. Frequently, we have things that should not be growing like mutated cancer cells. And when you switch to plant protein, plant protein has all nine essential amino acids of the essential amino acids, but they're in varying levels. And so the plant protein doesn't stimulate IGF-1 production. And when we switched to a plant-based diet, my husband had all these fatty tumors in his belly. Within mm -hmm. two months, the fatty tumors shrunk up because plant protein 
makes those capillaries retract back and it stops feeding growths that we have. So that's a huge thing. That's why there's such a correlation between cancer and high animal protein diet. So you can get all the protein you need from plants. The amino acids enter your body in varying levels and they're combined in your gut to the complete form. But when the protein enters your mouth in the complete form, as an animal protein, all animal protein is complete, meaning it has high levels of all those nine essential amino acids that ends up being cancer promoting. And that's what Dr. T. Colin Campbell um, talks about in the China study. If you want to get more information about that, read the China study. Yeah, great book. Thank um, you, Stephanie. Yeah, you betcha. And let's see, we got four minutes. So anyone else have any other questions? This is your big chance. Is there Someone anybody said, on, I was going to yeah, say, no. is there anyone on the call who has never tried a whole food plant-based diet? I'd be curious. Me, Michelle, danced on. How do we get Michelle's, oh, how do we get Michelle's book? Yeah, go ahead and tell us how we get your book, Michelle. You go on uh, my website, michellejoykramer.com and you click on that and you scroll all the way to the bottom and then you can put in your information and it will download. All right. One person that's not whole food plant-based, your friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, I'm going to challenge that person to this for seven days. Oh goodness. I know if I tell her that she can't do it, she'll do it. <laughs> my dad used to always do things. If you say those guys at Home Depot said that you're not supposed to do that on your own, he would do it. So that's what yes. I would tell you. The guys at Home Depot said that you can't do it. <laughs> so I hope that was helpful for everybody. And, um, you know, give it a try. This, this, even if it's one new thing that you try for yourself over the next week, you know, like Michelle, add in quinoa. It's a high protein grain, see how you feel. And um, little by little, you know, clients will say to me, oh, I didn't, I usually crave, you know, potato chips, I don't want them anymore. And so people, your taste buds start to change. So that's the idea when you can go slow and your taste buds start to change, you start wanting sweet potatoes or other things and you start feeling better and you feel happier. And, and I feel also with this diet, it's helped it's helped a lot of my clients with anxiety because when people are eating refined sugars and processed foods and drinking alcohol and doing all these things, they're dehydrated, their livers, you know, they're having liver issues, kidney problems. And so the cleaner you can be with your diet and lifestyle, the better, and it will pay off. And it does take a good three months minimum to really start to look and feel the difference, see the difference. All right. Well, I sure appreciate all your, all your insights and your story, Michelle. Um, yeah. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, yeah. Thanks for stepping in for Megan. Hope, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, if everyone heard at the beginning, um, Megan Burt was supposed to host tonight and her son wasn't feeling well. So she contacted me. And I don't know if y'all caught my uh, first uh, intro, but um I'm an RN, live in Arkansas, I focus on chronic disease reversal, and I do have a course coming up September 28th that is going to be live streamed. You can't participate remotely, um, and, and I focus on chronic disease reversal. I used to run a heart failure clinic for 20 years, and so I didn't realize there were um, people over 70 that didn't have diabetes <laughs> until I got into this business, but we reversed my husband's diabetes, so I was really interested in chronic disease reversal, but my uh, website is natural state, like Arkansas, natural state plant based dot uh, com. If you know anyone that's like diabetic, hypertensive, trying to avoid a triple bypass and they're scared, I just have a simple way to step by step program. But uh, yeah, so I sure appreciate everything, Michelle. We learned a whole lot from you tonight, and it's a really inspiring story. Um, makes me want to start training for a triathlon. Um, <laughs> do it, do it. Yeah, I totally will. It, um, <laughs> you know, I, I just want to say one thing. When I started, when I did my first triathlon, I couldn't swim. I could run one mile, and I didn't own a bike, and I was smoking cigarettes. So wow. anyone can do it. 
That is very inspiring. My goodness. Well, that's, that's, that is amazing. Um, I want to remind everyone to check the pbnsg.org website calendar uh, or the membership platform for event updates. And I sure appreciate everyone coming on tonight and wish you all the best. And I think your regular hosts, Megan or Marion, should be back next time. So we'll just see y'all then. So have a good evening. Take care and Thank be you. safe out there. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Tonight, everyone. Nice to see Bye -bye. everybody.